everybody. Today we're going to talk about power. So, start with the question, who has more power? Edward or Bella? Superman or Batman? So the question is, how do we determine this? How do we know how much power something has? We're going to go through a couple different scenarios to see what does it mean when something is powerful. I want to challenge you to think about what you think powerful means in, in your words that you would use as a teenager, but also think about what does it mean in terms of physics. So in physics, our formal definition of power is work divided by time. Another way to think about it is the rate at which you do work. If you do work quickly, you're powerful. If you work slowly, you're not that powerful. The units that we have for this are watts. The other one that we're used to is horsepower. Um, one horsepower is 747 watts. So uh, horsepower is an old term that meant uh, how much power one horse would have of pulling a carriage or um, doing work around a farm or whatnot. Power is the rate at which work is done. So formal definition, power is work over time. Big misconception. People will think the P stands for potential. No. In physics, um, if you want to say something has potential energy, we would write that as a U. Okay, that's really important. So when we see an equation, if it was like P equals W over T, P stands for power. Units are joules per second, which is the same thing as a watt. Um, this is going to be one of the grand unifying equations that we use. So this is a good rock climber. He does a lot of work. Um, he takes his body and he moves it all the way to the top of a mountain but it takes him a long time to do it. So we'd say he's not very powerful. The rate at which work is done is slow. Now, if he were to sprint up this thing, then we'd say he has a lot of power. Second definition that we can use for power. Power is work divided by time. Well, work is also force times displacement. So I'm gonna rewrite this as force times displacement over time. So power is force times displacement over time. And displacement over time is velocity. So one way to do this is if we said power is force times velocity. Very important. This is saying I have a constant velocity, and here I have a single force. So this is, does not work in all cases because I need to have constant velocity. But if you see an object that's moving at constant velocity, this is the route I would go. Power equals force times velocity. Now, let's do one example. Mackenzie, my daughter, is climbing the stairs here at Union. She has a mass of 13.6. If each of the 22 steps is 12 centimeters tall, and she gets to the top in 30 seconds, how much power does Mackenzie generate? Let's start with our basic equation. Power is work divided by time. And let's think of my daughter here. What is she doing as she goes up these steps? What type of work is she doing? She's taking herself and she's going up these steps. What type of work did she do? She gave herself potential due to gravity. She started with no potential and she ended with gravitational potential. So we'd say the work she did is gravitational potential all over time. Equation for gravitational potential is mgh. So now I have mgh over time. So power is her mass 13.6, gravity is 10, height she gets to is 22 steps times 12 centimeters. Got to make sure, got to make sure that I'm in meters. Time it takes her to do it is 30 seconds. 12 watts. Now notice, another confusion people will get is, well, oh, it's a W, it's work. No. Watts is the rate at which joules change. So another way that we could write this is power is 12 joules per second. So every second, my daughter can convert 12 joules of energy. So which has more power? So I'm going I'm to push you to pause this and think about how can I solve this? So I have a 1,000 kilogram Porsche and I have a 20,000 kilogram dump, uh, dump truck. And the question is, which one has more power? Well, the Porsche gets going really fast. Um, 135 miles an hour. The dump truck can lift and move a whole bunch of mass vertically. So the question is, which one has more power? Pause, try to set it up, and then start it up again. Here we go. So the first one with the Porsche, power is work divided by time. 
And so what I see is, I start with that, start with my definition. The work that the Porsche does is it changes its kinetic energy. After, and then I divide that by the time it took. Well, it started with no kinetic energy, and so its change is its final kinetic energy divided by time. So I solve for its final kinetic divided by the time, and I get a whole bunch of watts. Now, if I divide that by how much one horsepower is 746 watts, I can solve for how many horsepower that is. That's 442 horsepower. If you're a car junkie, it's kind of accurate. I made up these numbers, but it's still pretty accurate. So pause it again and see if you can do it for the dump truck. But think now, for the dump truck, it's not doing the same type of work. It's not just getting speed. It's doing something a little bit different. Think about what type of work it's doing. Think of the dump truck. The work that it's doing is it's changing its potential energy and the load inside of it. So the change in potential energy due to gravity is mass times gravity times height. And so I'm going to plug in its mass. Well, it's very, stay with me for one second. That's 820,000 kilograms because it's not just lifting itself. It's also lifting all the rock in, it, in the back of it. The height that it lifts it to is 12 meters. It's like a 40-foot hill. How long did it take? It took it 85 seconds. So if we look at it, this dump truck has, it's generating a lot of power. It's converting, it's converting energy. I mean, even though it's not converting it very quickly, it took it 85 seconds, it's doing a lot of work. And so as it does a lot of work, even though it took a little bit longer than the Porsche did to do all of this work, it did so much more work. And so if you think about it, it lifted all of these tons of rock up the hill. All right. So now we're going to put us in kind of a classic question. So this is more of your FRQ style question. So, um, so keep that in mind. This is not like, oh, this is a basic little problem. Um, this, is, uh, this is where it gets a little tougher. So I've got an elevator. The mass of the elevator is that. Carries a load of that. Mm. So let's start with that. The mass is going to be both of those put together. So 1250 plus 995. So I've got a total mass of 2245 kilos because it's going to ask me about the max load in a second. A constant frictional force of that exists. So I've got a friction force of 3850 newtons. What minimum power for the motor is needed to lift it at a constant speed of constant speed? It should have keyed you in a little bit. Because right now we have two equations. Power is work divided by time, and then the other one we have is power is force times velocity. Which one looks more appealing? Hopefully you're saying this bottom one looks good, um, and then the rest, eh, you know, I'm not going to do that. So power is force times velocity. So we know one piece of it already. We don't know the force, but I do know the velocity. 3.5 meters per second. What force does it apply? Write something down. Okay. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram. My elevator has a weight force. And it also has, if it's going up, right, which way is the friction? Friction's going to be down, 3,850. My weight force is 22,450 newtons. I took the mass over here, and I multiplied by 10. So if that is my force is downwards, my upwards force, my tension in my cable is going to be 3,850 and 22,450. And so my upwards force is going to be 3850 plus 22,450. It's going to be 26,300. So 26,300 newtons. And so I get a power of, divide by 3.5. that many watts. One last problem. The motor is rated at 1,000 watts. It runs for eight minutes. How much energy did it use? So power is work divided by time. The power rating is 1,000. The work I don't know. The time is eight minutes, but i got to convert that into seconds. So the work done is one joules. So how much energy did it use? Work is change in energy 
So how much energy did it convert during those eight minutes? 480,000 joules. There you go. Have a good one.